Hey everyone. Well, today it's the 22nd of April, and you notice that my pool is not what she used to be. Well, we're actually getting a new one quite soon, and well, this one will be a lot better than the old one. I miss it, and it's been 22 years since we owned this pool. Alright, so now enough about the pool. So today, as you probably would have guessed, we are making the 90th feeding video. But I'm going to be making this again in two separate days, um, in three separate videos. So this time is going to be featuring all my adults and my juveniles and slings, except the Tapia Nikinia Santi Vincenti, which will be on a separate day because we do have a hundred of those to feed. As well as uh, giving the first meal uh, to the P. regalis Indian ornamentals. As you can see, they're all wedged inside here. Man, there's a lot. Alright, so now, I guess we'll uh, get started and hope you enjoy it. So the certain teas we won't feature, as of obvious reasons, because they freshly molted. And the bee Bomi is uh, still in pre-molt, as you can see by her blackish abdomen. Alright, so the first tea I'm going to try to feed is the Nandu Colorado Velosis, the Brazilian black and white Mina. She's a four and a half, five inch female. And there she goes. Here's Dora, the Lassiodora difficilis, the Brazilian fire red bird eater. Nice job, 5 inch female. Here's Kira, a male B. Abapolosum. This is the one that I handled in the last Mythbuster video. And he pooped on me. There we go. Well, I just found this lovely molt inside Marsha's cage. This is my Ceratogyrus marshali, the straight horn baboon. Freshly molted, I think it was a couple of days ago. Her fangs are hardened. I tried feeding her and she wouldn't eat. Looked to be a fantastic molt, except that she's got a little broken leg right over here. Yeah, so that's why she wasn't featured on her feeding video. Yeah, not the most docile baboons. And there's the horn if anyone's interested in looking at it. Touching it, it's actually pretty hard, pretty brittle. Alright, so my Phonopala moderatum is not interested in eating her cricket, so we're going to try my Brachypalma albiceps, the Mexican gold red rum. Wow, amazing. What a lovely attack. Alright, this tea may be hard to see, but this one here is my Foligus or Salino Cosmia crassipeeps, the Queensland whistling spider from Australia. Ooh, nice one. No problem. Here's one you haven't seen in a super long time, my black trapper spider. I got this around two years ago. Still healthy. I don't really see it very much, if not at all. Uh, the first time I ever saw it recently was one of my early feeding videos. I actually got a clip of that. But I actually never see it out in the open anymore. And it doesn't usually attack the prey when I'm recording. It usually takes it right after I stop the camera. So kind of a shame that you know we actually never see the specimen, nor in any of my feeding videos. But just thought I should give you an update on it. It's still alive. It's still doing well. And as long as the crickets keep disappearing from the top, I know it's doing a-okay. 
All right, this is the Linotheli Phallox that molted. She molted on Thursday, so yeah, she got it. Wow, impressive. Give you an idea of what this species looks like. Yeah, my lighting is not the greatest, but what a beautiful specimen. Extremely leggy. Still good in this uh, deli container next time she molts. Gonna house her up. One of the greatest web builders. Once again, this is a Linotheli phallox, or the Brazilian diplora. Next is my female Brachypelma emilia, the Mexican painted red leg. Oh, she's gonna eat. There we go, no exception. One gorgeous looking tea. A must have in your Brachypelma collection. And quite docile too. Possible female or male P. fasciata, Sri Lankan ornamental. Yeah, that guy pretty hitty hard. I can't even see him anymore. Yeah, there he is. Enjoy your supper. This one here is Mystery, my Scythoracanthus Livingstoni, or a Phonopalma Crini Rufum. The Livingston's tea comes from Guatemala. Oh, wow, you were hungry. Nice job, sweetie. I think this tea is not interested. I just fed her. She's not eating. Uh, it's my Hapopalma Lividum, Cobalt Blue. I thought I should give you another update on her. Alright, this tea will scare the hijibis out of me. Stromatopalma Calciatum, the Feather Leg Baboon. That cricket is wasted. Here's Talia G. Rosea. It's the normal form. One of my best eaters. Come on. She usually eats anything. Pretty much a hard hitter, too. Come on, Talia, that's her favorite. Superworms are your favorite. Ah, she must be going through those common G. rosea fasting problems. Alright. Let's move on to this tea. This one here is a Vitalius Sorokebi, which is known as the Brazilian striped bird eater. Hasn't eaten in quite a while. But now, this year, she's been phenomenal. She eats like anything. Very hungry specimen, and certainly she's no exception. I think this one will be the next feature of my MythBuzzer video. Talia, you disappointed me. Here's Darius, a immature male. Nandu tripepi, the giant strawberry blonde bird eater. Ooh, nice one. You <laughs> just scored it all over me and got the camera too. Wow. Ah, now I got all mealworm, superworm juices all over my camera. Huh. <laughs> At least you made the feeding video a lot of interesting now. Darius wins. Fatality. Here's a tea that we haven't seen in such a long time. That's Amber. Uh, she's my full-grown two-inch Euathlis species red. Or, as I like to call it, 
uh, the Chilean fire rump. No, I guess not hungry. Lassidora Klugi, the Bahia Scarlet Bird Eater. Not a problem for him. Brachypelma Verdesi, the Mexican Rose Gray. Another very good eater of mine. Ooh, that was a nice pounce there. Kalina. If it's a female, and maybe Dr. Cossack, if he's a male. Alright, Tapnikinia Skegis, Orange Tree Spider. Uh, this is the female. Of my offspring that I got back two years ago. Uh, let's see how well she will do. Ooh, nice somersault there. Uh, Tapin Kinius Gigas male. Ooh, nice one. There we go. Hard to see with all the webbing. Here's another Gigas male. Eight without a hitch. And here's the female. There it is. Here's Zephina, Poclotheria Hanuma Vila Samika, the Remesh Warm Ornamental. There we go. Usually pokies are Great attack artists, great hunters. This one potentially might look like a female, judging by her folio stripes, so that might be actually lucky once again. Wow, that was spectacular. Spectacular. Coming from a rare, rare pokey. Nice. So someone requested to see my Acanthoscuria geniculata, the giant white knee, and what a perfect way to update him from a feeding video. So this is Derek, a 3 inch male. That's what he loves to do best, eating. Very nice looking species. This one here is a P. Petersoni ghost ornamental. Lovely attack. I'm hoping this one is a female, but I have reason to believe this might be another male. This is another pokey where, well, you know it. Just can't find a female for this one. Evicularia Leta, Puerto Rican Pink Toe. Peekaboo. She grew big. Two and a half inches right now. Alright, that little blonde blob is my Samopolis Pulker, Panama Blonde, that I named Rosalina after the Super Mario Galaxy series. Oh, she'd grab that one. Man, she's absolutely amazing. If you look at her thicker legs are. <laughs> she's pretty looking. Here's Annabelle with all the webbies. So this is the Vicularia Vicularia Pink Toe. Wow. Well, I guess she's not in pre molt Man. <laughs> I underestimated her. She looks so funny and so cute with all the pink toes. Here's another fantastic looking pokey. 
This one here is a Pocotheria tigrina wiseli, the Bustle Tiger ornamental. And there she is. You can really see the purplish hues on the carapace and especially on the legs. What extreme looker. Here is the Mother Sancti Vincenti. Those 100 slings that I got from her sack, very good. Should be on sale within the next couple of weeks. Next two weeks, she'll be ready to eat. And there we go. <laughs> very cool looking tappy. And that's what she looks like up close in person. Very nice looking species. And I guess when she molts the next time, I'm going to see if I can try to breed her again. She did be proud. And there's Joelle, Piornata, and your female. Called the Fringe Dornamental. And there she is, if you guys want to get a good appreciation of her. One of the largest pokies. And not something to be trifled with, because they're pretty skittish, and most of these specimens are pretty defensive. Alright, here's my piece triata, the Mysore Ornamental. Yep, no problem for her. Or it might be a guy. This is a mature male, Eupalestros camperstratus, the pink zebra beauty. Named Floyd. Here we go, very gently. Now I'll show you my female who did not want to eat on camera, but she ate anyway. Where is she? There she is. Very fat, and I guess this week I'll try to pair them up a third time. See if I have any success on the. Here's an update for everyone to enjoy. My Monocentropus balfouri, which is the Socotra Island Blue Baboon. Well, I guess this is the only way I can see her since she's pretty much a pet hole. Very nice looking tea and very, very pricey too. Thankfully, uh, Tea Soy Spiders sold me uh, one of his absolutely remarkable specimen. Alright, she doesn't eat, so let's move on to the next one. I guess another update for my Rocky Palma Vagans pair. Here's my mature female. Just fed a super worm, and she's clearly not interested in it. And then I'll give an update on Brad's male. His mature male, he's doing great. Uh, he just messaged me to send it over to Tarantula Canada, so they can have a go with their female once it molts. So I'm hoping that one mating attempt was sufficient for her to mate. Very big tea though, but um, one of the more defensive brachies. Here's Nadia, Nandu chromatis, the white striped bird eater. Around a three and a half inch female. Ooh, nice one. Yeah, all the Nandus ate. Perfect. Check out this behemoth. This one here is my 6 inch female Acanthoscuria Brocklehursti, the giant white banded. Very similar to the Ginicolata, except they have different type of hair on the abdomen. Still a very hungry eater. Yeah, 
Thomas, you just demonstrated what Canthus couriers are famous for. They eat like horses. One of the must-haves in anyone's collection is a Chromatopalma cyanopubescens, mature female green bottle blue. Yeah, this time she actually ate. Not bad. You can see a very remarkable looking specimen. Metallic green carapace, royal blue legs, orange abdomen, heavy Weber, very easy to take care of. One of the best uh, intermediate tarantulas to get. Okay, so you can see one of the legs of my Pocotheria rufolata, the red site ornamental. She's a big girl, seven inches. And she grabbed it. So I'll give you an idea of what she looks like now. She's grown considerably large. There we go. Look at that roofie. She's huge. Now let's try a Lassiodora parahibana, the salmon pink bird eater. This is Daisy. Pocothera regalis, Indian ornamental, Selda. Here's Alda. Go eat your food. She's pretty aggressive and certainly very large teeth. Here we go. That's my rendition of uh, Zelda's Lullaby. Hope you like it. Still have more to feed. Next we try a P. Formosa, Salem Ornamental. Cool. Here's another pokey for you to enjoy. This one here is a Pocotheria Barra, which is the Ivory Lowland Ornamental. Very identical to the Safaska Highland. That's it. That's my girl. I've gotta say, this is so beautiful to look at. Let me draw out her colors on the flashlight so you can see what she looks like. Overall black color, a couple of purple highlights, especially on the legs. You might not be able to see very well, but you can tell that it has some gold highlights on it. Very, very beautiful pokey. This one here is a Samopoas Cambridge Eye, Trinidad Chevron. 7-inch female named Trina. A very beautiful arboreal, one of the largest of the Summer Post genus. Gets around seven inches big. Alright, this one here is a Summer Post Camerjai, turned at Chevron. Those little four babies that I got from Sinister on Arachnoboards. There's one of them. She's trying to attack it. And I think she did. <laughs> kind of looks like a Peter Minhe a little bit. But they change. Alright, here's the second P. Cambridge Eye.
one of my all-time favorite new additions, with exception to the M. Balfouri, is my Hapulpa species Columbia Large, the Pumpkin Patch. I make out of this attack? But we'll see. <laughs> nice. She's gonna enjoy her meal. Hoping this one's a female. Critophilus Ramsey, Cuban Pygmy, Tech Type. Not too bad at all. Well, this is the fifth molt that I've gotten this week. Now, this time is from my Lamper Palma Valisiopes, the Singapore Violet. And you could probably just barely see her. She's freshly molted, so I won't be able to feed her until a week. Wow, you can really see the blue on her legs. Thanks, Mademoiselle One. Wendy, who provided me this lovely specimen after mine had passed away due to a bad molt. Very, very cool. Next up is Marin. She is a Thrixopalma sanulum, the cobalt red rump. usually eats like a horse. Lassiodora fracta, the Brazilian smoky gray bird eater. Willow. Brachypalma vagans, Mexican red rum. This is my sling Annette. In the hole. Here's an Ophilopus Professens, the Burgundy Skeleton. Oh, she's hungry. There we go. Awesome deal. Here's Morris. This is a Gramasola Rosea, Rose Hair, Red Form. Beautiful. Next up is Gretel, my adult female Theraphosa Sturmi. Burgundy Goliath Bird Eater. And we'll give one more. Let's see if she takes it. She's huge. There you go, two super worms in a row. Here's Big Boy, and he's certainly pretty old. This is my mature male. Theraphosa Sturmi. Gramasola Poker Piece, the Chocolate Goldene. This is Charlotte. She's like six inches. And very hungry too. Here's Goma, Lassidora Parahibana, Salmon Pink Bird Eater. Around three and a half, four inches. Here's Jason's mature male, Phonopalma Calcotes, Desert Blonde. Still mating and no response from the female. going to be trying again this week to see if he's willing to have another go with this uh, female of mine. Let's see, he's getting old now. There we go. 
You got it. One gorgeous Brachypalma smithy, Mexican Redney, her Scarlet. And this one's my last LP, Daniela. Crazy Eater. Here's my other G Rosea. Wow, amazing. I actually got this here eat. If I can try to get the other one close to her. Wow, I never seen her go crazy for crickets. And she's an adult specimen, six inches. No, really five and a half. But very cool. And yeah, this is the one that refused food up to four months and lo and behold I think it was a tarantula feeding video 88. I think that's when we got her for the first time to be feeding in front of the camera. And it just makes me happy. And I guess I'll end off the feeding video with an update. And not interested in eating. My big old Pamphibedius antinus. The Bolivian steely blue leg. Seven inches. And not very happy. And here's Maggie. Hey girl. What's up? Okay, sit. Roll over. Roll over. Good girl. Sit. High five. Paw, paw. Give me paw. Other paw. Here we go. <laughs> She certainly has a very lively energy from her. All right, everyone. So uh, that's the end of our feeding video 90. So I hope you enjoy it. And thanks for watching.